There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hey, Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Here I am with a review of George Gissing's 1893 novel, The Odd Women. Wow, this was the highlight of my Victober. This is one of the best novels I've read from the Victorian period, and I want to try and tell you why. The novel opens in maybe the 1860s. Dr. Madden doesn't know that he's going to die the next day, but we meet him the day before his unfortunate, very sudden death, he is a widower, and he has an innumerable amount of daughters, and only three of them are important for the rest of the novel. Poor Dr. Madden. Kicks the bucket. We also meet a neighbor and friend of all these daughters, whose name is Rhoda. Then the novel jumps ahead into the late 1880s, and the three Madden sisters that we are concerned with are all unmarried and maybe aged from their mid-twenties up into their early forties, working themselves to the bone in London. There is not a lot of money going around. They are middle-class women, but they are eking out a subsistence-style living, and it's not pretty. The labor conditions and the, uh, the industrial, all the things going on, it was awful. The, the air pollution inside the workplace, inside the offices, the workplace injuries, all this stuff. They were all on their last legs because they were working themselves to death. Rhoda, it turns out, is also in London and she is thriving. She is in a partnership with another spinster named Miss Barfoot. That partnership is business and deep friendship without any lesbian overtones and they do a lot of intellectual work with middle-class women and a lot of practical work training single women for practical jobs beyond that of a nanny or a teacher and placing them thusly, helping them get into the workforce. And they also do a lot of intellectual uh, lecturing and whatnot. Rhoda is reunited with the Madden sisters and reaches out especially to help the youngest, Monica. And that's as much of a plot as I'm going to give. There are two male characters that enter the picture. Marriage is a huge part of the story here. Rhoda Nunn is a staunch feminist who does not think that any marriage is any good. Her older partner, Miss Barfoot, she's a little bit more easygoing about marriage, but basically, the novel accurately reflects the fact that at this stage... And carrying right up to now, men are usually the problem. However, that's the intellectual political stuff. And then there are emotions. There is romantic yearning. There is sexual attraction. Gissing does a masterful job in making this not a novel of ideas. Not in the way that makes readers like me fall asleep. This is a novel that has characters so well drawn that they here comes that Sean the book maniac expression again they jump off the page and yes Miss Barfoot and Rhoda are very intellectual and there are some quite intellectual discussions but not at the expense of all of these characters living and muddling through and trying to improve their lives in a way that reveals far more than and is often directly contradicting what the political philosophy or the social manifesto might be. That is so expertly explored here in a way that makes none of the characters black and white. All of them, can I say it this way? All of them are colorfully gray. <laughs> wow, and the men too, very nuanced uh, one of them is a little bit more of an asshole than the other. That's all I'm going to say. No spoilers here. And it's a page turner. And it's emotionally compelling. I almost broke down into tears a couple times with the Victorian novel. What the heck? But the ideas are in that way with sensitivity and with rich characters and with a really intricately structured plot explored the way that a novel explores these kind of things. It's so compelling. 
This is my first by George Gissing. I want to read more. So much of this speaks to what's going on now. I mean, yes, it's Victorian, so women have achieved a large degree of emancipation, but, you know, marriage is still a highly problematical institution. It's just fantastic. So I'm running out of words here. Let me say that there were a couple half-page passages that made me wince, that detract for a full page of this 300-page novel, because they reflect horrible sentiments that would have been unquestioned at that time. And they were conversations between characters, one in which the idea of reaching out to lower class w women is dismissed out of hand because they are just mere animals. And the other one, much later in the novel, where there is a laughing but semi-serious conversation between a man and a woman, where the feminist woman states, again, half laughingly, half seriously, that yes, there were some idiot wives that deserved to get beaten. But those two very questionable, very dated passages aside, this is a novel that, that speaks at least to this 21st century reader. It's a phenomenal novel. I recommend it highly. Thanks for watching.